By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And welcome back in Leeuwarden, the Netherlands. We have reached the quarterfinals of the Often Troll Cup. Wow, this is going to be exciting. We've got two top players with top decks going mano a mano to battle it out. Who will uh, continue to the semis? We have Baptiste. He's playing a blue-white X control deck. It's pretty much the deckish, but with a couple of changes. He is taking on Leo Bruder, and he's playing his signature deck, uh, Blue, Black, Red, Bruder bots. So it's a robots deck with trikes, with suchis, with copy artifacts, but also a lot of interesting one-offs, like a one-off dance of many. But more about that in the deck tech section of the video. Before we do that, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to go to the games first. I know some people prefer to do that. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of the timestamps reads MTG Games. So just click on there. It'll take you straight to the games. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon page. And that is patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. So if you enjoy what I do, please consider becoming a sponsor of the show. It already starts, starts for just $1 a month. Okay, and now that you're fully informed, I'm going to continue with the deck decks. I'm going to start with the uh, blue white X control deck of Baptiste. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Bapti, so blue, white, X control. And I mean, this is really kind of the deck deck, right? I mean, he's got four GM day tomes in here. That, that says it all, doesn't it? Just those four tomes means you really want to win here with card advantage. That's where you're going to go uh, for from a very control position, right? You've got four counter spells and you've got the mana drain. You've got your disenchants in your sword. So that package is going to help you to do a lot of meaningful one-for-one -one trades to maybe protect your bigger spells with counter magic to get rid of like the creatures of your opponent with the swords or the, or the difficult artifacts with the disenchants. Kind of make sure that you just stay ahead of the curve and then you know with your gem day tome start drawing extra cards and from the card advantage eventually win the game and of course you've got your very powerful power cards and restricted cards right uh, cards like brain geyser will get you ahead uh, a well-timed recall can do a lot when you play with a deck like this also ancestral recall of course time walk those cards can be decisive and don't underestimate the black splash right the demonic tutor and the mind twist which i believe are also in the deck of leo today you know you really see when you reach this level, that you keep seeing this, the usual suspects coming back for the simple reason that these are the best cards. And there's a reason, of course, why cards are part of Power 9 or why cards are restricted in a format. That's usually because they're very powerful. So you're going to see them back in, in these decks at this stage of the tournament. So yeah, it's, it's looking like a good deck. A very, very controlling deck with four JM Day Tomes, like I, like I mentioned at the introduction. So I think I think Baptiste is going to, gonna, you know, sit back try to make sure that he survives, really drag it into a later game, and then, you know, try to get ahead with the with the card advantage. Now, let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Leo's Robots. Let's go. And here we see the deck of Leo Bruder, so Bruder Bots. So this is all about uh, the robots and copying the robots, right? And with the robots, I'm talking about the artifact creatures, of course, Terskelion and Suchi. The main copy target will be the trike because of the simple fact that the trike comes with three plus one plus one counters that you can take off to deal one damage to any target. So at a certain point of, in the game, if you just have enough trikes, you can win the game on the spot, right? Every trike equals a lightning bolt, basically, right? So if your opponent is, what, on 10, you only need three trikes or actually four trikes to win the game, which may sound like a lot, but remember, he's playing with a full playset of Triskelions, a full playset of copy artifacts, and, which I think is pretty cool, also a Dance of Many. Now, Dance of Many is an artifact from the dark for two blue. When it comes into play, you get to clone target uh, creature, and then it creates a copy, and that copy is the creature. The cool thing is, when you've got a, uh, a copied token of the creature, you cannot flip your Chaos Orb on it, because you cannot flip a Chaos Orb on a token. So that's just a little thing it's, it's probably not relevant, but maybe it's going to be relevant. That would be quite cool. There are a few downsides, though, on the Dance of Many. And one of those is that you've got to pay two blue during your upkeep or else the Dance of Many is destroyed. And remember, when the Dance of Many is destroyed, so is the token. So it is a little bit vulnerable, right? If you get rid of the, the Enchantment Dance of Many, the token is gone. If you get rid of the token, the Enchantment is gone. So they're, they're linked together. Now, uh, a card that I want to highlight here in the deck are the three Sages of Latin. And they're quite important in this deck, I feel at least. It's a one blue and one to 
cast this 1-2 creature from Antiquities, you can tap it to sacrifice target artifact to draw a card, which of course is very powerful in the deck with so many artifacts. And also, of course, the copy artifacts are basically artifacts that you can sack to draw. So later in the game, for example, you can start trading in your Moxin for cards because usually your mana base is quite like build out later in the game and then you just want extra fuel so you can exchange those moxen for cards but it's also quite nice when someone wants to play removal on your artifacts like in response so they play a disenchant let's say on your um you know on your triskelion you can say i'm going to deal three damage to you take the counters off and then also sack it to the sage to draw a card so your opponent is down a disenchant taking three damage and you're drawing a card with the sage like that's explosive value so my advice would always be if you're playing against an artifact deck with sages get rid of the sages because they're going to give card advantage to your opponent so it's going to be interesting to see how opponents are going to respond here to the sages of latinam of um of leo and another interesting uh, thing here is sometimes leo probably wants to put creatures into the graveyard uh, because he's playing with two anime deaths as well so you could have a scenario here where he sacks an empty trike to the sage to draw a card and then he plays an anime debt to get it back and you've got three new counters again you know and you can do three damage again to any target or simply have a three four on the battlefield so you know so that's quite nice so when we're looking at the rest of the deck so we see a lot of artifacts we see a lot of blue then we also see a little bit of black right we see the anime debts and of course the demonic tutor um and of course the mind twist you know mind twist demonic tutor they're just auto includes in almost every deck here in the top eight and then we see a red package which is actually quite good we see a lot of one-offs here right a one of fireball one of wheel of fortune one of shatter one of light uh, one of lightning bolt and a one of atox so there's so many one-offs in this deck and the hard thing about one of is it's really difficult to board against because you don't know what what your opponent's gonna do and all those one-offs are good in a deck that also plays Demonic Tutor because when you have the Tutor, you can, of course, choose all these options. It's really like a toolbox, you know, it's quite nice. I think the Atok, for example, can be decisive at the right time in this deck, you know, but he's not making it into an Atok deck. It's just an extra weapon that he has. And I've, I, I like that. I like that philosophy. Same thing goes for a Lightning Bolt. A Lightning Bolt is basically an extra to scale in, in, in terms of dealing direct damage to your opponent. So sometimes... Maybe you need that three extra damage to just seal the deal. You can look it up with your with your demonic tutor. Probably play at the same turn. Bam, you know, and 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 there you go, which is quite nice. So yeah, I mean, this this it, it just makes it more difficult to play against all the one offs. Um, okay, this is the deck of Leo. We've talked about the deck of his opponent, which only means one thing: we are ready for the quarterfinals of the Upton Troll Cup number five. Here we go. Game number one here of the quarterfinals of the Often Troll Cup. Baptiste versus Leo. Baptiste sitting on the left with his blue white X control deck taking on Bruder Bots. Here we see the opening hand of Baptiste. We see a Mox, a Tundra, a Bolt, a Counterspell, some Lance. It's looking good, looking solid. Here's the opener of Leo. Ooh, the Ancestral Recall makes it worthwhile. Also, Time Walk. A little bit light on Lance, but he can open City of Brass into Ancestral. I would definitely keep this hand. I'm not sure who's on the play here. So Leo playing a blue, black, red robots deck. Putting a card here on the bottom. It's really a signature deck, Bruder Bots. So I guess he took a mulligan here, starting with six. There's the opening by Baptiste. So there's the Mox and the Tundra and the past turn. Ooh, also a bounce there in the hand. That could be interesting. There we see an Ancestral Recall. Starting here with the recall. Let's see, can he find a mox to play out? Does he need to discard now? Nope, he does not. There's a mox, of course, meaning that he's got seven in hand passing the turn. Both players now having a mox ruby. There's the city of breast. Remember, uh, Baptiste has a counter spell in hand. So count counter magic is active. Look at that top deck by Leo. That's a mind twist. Could try to twist for two. But I'm, uh, I'm quite sure he's probably going to be a little bit more patient. Knowing that he can potentially run into counter magic. Thinking... Okay, there's a time walk. Baptiste is going to allow it, it seems. Yep, he's giving the gesture. Saying, okay, go ahead. This is quite nice for Leo. Because now he can have a land drop. And he can play something out for two. And keep potential counter magic open. Has, I believe, a Sage of Latinam, for example, in hand. 
City in a Bottle now also drawn by Leo could go City of Brass, use it to cast City in a Bottle to try to get rid of the City of Brass of Baptiste, basically a land for land trade. Looks like he's thinking about casting the Sage of Latinam here, which is one blue and one. Thinking about what lands to tap for it. He's going for it. There's the Sage of Latinam. No counter magic here from Baptiste. Baptiste is probably thinking I've got enough creature removal to deal with the Sage. And there's the pass by Leo. And oh, there's a Bolt. Of course, he had the Bolt in hand here. Bolt on the Sage, which is quite nice. Good target for the Bolt. And there's a pass, so Baptiste missing his land drop. That is pretty painful for him. And this is, of course, good news for Leo. But also Leo quite light here on lands. Look at that hand. I don't believe there's a single land in it. So that means he's got a choice. Am I going to tap out completely to play out a card? I mean, that city in the bottle must be interesting as well. Look at that. Going for the anime debt to get back the Sage of Latinam. So that Sage of Latinum is now a 0-2 because it gets minus 1, minus 0 from the animate. But of course that's not very relevant, it's all about the ability. Okay, and there we see, there's a sword. And this really shows like how good the Sage is in this deck, right? I mean, Baptiste is willing to kill it twice because he knows how important it is. And I think it's a good decision. And now uh, Baptiste drawing a card, again passing the turn. I believe that's a Fireball in hand there. So really not finding any lands which is unfortunate for him. I would be tempted here if I was Leo to go for that city in a bottle play to try to get rid of the uh, city of brass on the side of Baptiste. I mean, yes, you destroy your own land, but I mean, Baptiste has huge land issues, right? Huge mana issues. So might be worthwhile. Exactly. There he goes. Probably going to see a counter spell here. Baptiste really in the tank thinking, I don't want to waste my counter spell on this, but maybe I have to. Asking about the cards in hand uh, by Leo. Leo still having quite a lot of cards in hand there. I feel like he has to counter this, right? Maybe he's thinking about the balance play, saying, okay, I'm going to lose a land, not going to do much, let Leo play out some threats and then play my balance. I mean, that could be a line you can follow as well. And this is the tough thing about magic, right? It's, 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 not, it's not clear what the best decision is here. Both of these players have uh, played in many, many top eights, many, many finals as well in old school Magic tournaments. So they know how to win a game. They know what decisions they have to make. So I'm really curious to see if he is going to counter. Nope, he's not. He's going to allow it. And I guess it's just a pass turn here exactly by, uh, by Leo. Leo having, I believe, a Suchi in hand. Again, no Lance. Ah, oh, this is so tough. For Baptiste, oh, ho, ho, there's a mind twist, yeah. There's no double blue anymore for Baptiste. This is pretty much game one done. Yeah, it is what it is. At least he gets to keep two cards. Yeah, losing the balance there. That was really his main plan, I think. That balance plan after allowing the city in a bottle to happen. He really went on the balance strategy and uh, he got punished for it with that mind twist. Very painful moment here, and it's just very unlucky for Baptiste here not to find any land, really. There's the Suchi, and I guess if you're if you're Leo, you can start playing your threats, and, and you should have this game in the bag. It's not completely done yet, but under normal circumstances, looks like there is going to be a flip here. Exactly. Chaos Orb flip. Is he going to flip here on the Suchi? Yep. I mean, at least Baptiste is still on 20. It's not like over, over, but it's just looking really bad for him at the moment. Let's see if he's going to hit this flip. A lot of pressure here. Quarterfinals. <laughs> it's a hit. So that's quite nice. And uh, there's the pass. That's a psionic blast, I believe, taken from the top. Leo really wants to get this 6 mana to start casting his Triskelions there, but only has 5, could animate to attack here, that's exactly what he does. The Factory, of course, of Baptiste still has Summoning Sickness. So Baptiste is going to go to 18 here. Looks like he's not using his dice, so I'm going to try to keep you up to date about his life total. 
There's an island. Okay, now the fun can begin. But he's not doing it, though. He is attacking again. And then tapping four for a Suchi instead. So Baptiste is now on 16. Jam de Tome drawn. Still no lands. That's unfortunate for Baptiste. Another Mockster, I believe, for Leo, which is quite good. I wonder if he's going to start playing the trikes. Animating again, attacking for six. Wow, so now he's going to drop to ten. He's in trouble. Still cannot find any lands. So unfortunate for him. Okay, Flower Stone, that's something. But he knows that it's going so incredibly slow. And he's on 10, remember that. On end step, Psionic Blast, he's going to go to 6. And he's saying, you know, you've got this. Backing up here, game number 1, won by Leo. And yeah, after that mind twist, it was over, over. When he lost that, uh, that balance, all hope was gone. So game 1 going to Leo. Now both these players are going to uh, go into their sideboards. And we will catch back up with them in game uh, number 2. Game number two, here we go. So it's Baptiste, of course, on the play after losing game one. It's looking uh, like an interesting hand there. Brain Geyser, Mana Drain, Black Lotus also in that hand, I believe. So if he can utilize the Mana Drain in combination with the Black Lotus and the Brain Geyser, he can kind of like refill his hand big time. But it looks like he is taking a mulligan, though. That is not great when you're on the play. Taking his time here, understandably so, here in the quarterfinals. Is he putting two cards there on the bottom? Ooh, that is tough. Double? Was it a double? No, it was a single mulligan, I believe. Or no, it was a double. Only three cards left in hand. Wow, that is tough. Really needs, he really needs that brain guys there to have an impact. I think that's really important for him. And I think... I think he's not going to play out the Felwer Stone. You want to keep your mana drain, mana open right without using the Lotus or or not. Who am I to judge here? Making a playing the Felwer, passing the turn. Probably thinking about what Leo can do in turn two, which is not something that he would want to counter probably. Could play out a Sage of Letnam, for example. There's a copy artifact instead. I wonder what he's going to copy. That's always difficult. He's going to sack the Lotus here to counter it. So he's got two mana in the in the mana pool from the mana drain here. So probably going to go for a Brain Geyser for three. That's exactly what he does. So going to go for three here. Like an Ancestral Recall, finding a land, Disenchant. Also Swords to Plowshares and Sarah Angel. Actually quite good. The problem is he only has three cards, but the three cards are quite good. Leo's going to tap. There's a Sage. Passing the turn. A quick sword to Plowshares on the Sage. That means Leo is going to go up to 21. But it's not looking great for Baptiste. And remember, he's already behind the game. Second Sarah drawn. Only two Sarahs in the deck. Both of them are now in his hand. That's not ideal. He's quite unlucky here uh, in this uh, in this top eight match. Remember, game one couldn't find lands. In this game, he had to go down to five cards. There's a sage. And I mean, I can imagine if you're Baptiste, you're really not happy with the way this is going. There's a flower stone as well on a pass. Asking about the amount of cards in hand. Four, I believe, for Leo. Three cards in hand, I believe, for Baptiste. There is a disenchant. He wants to probably make sure that Baptiste cannot go up to six to start casting for Skellions, but yeah, I'm not sure if I would have disenchanted it. It's tough though. This is an okay top deck for Baptiste, this counter spell. But what he really needs is like an essential recall, you know, he just needs to be lucky here. Balance would be would be nice at a certain point, probably in this in this match. Oh, again a mind twist. Are you kidding me? Gotta counter this, but you're not happy when you're Baptiste because now the counter spell is gone. Gonna take a damage here. Gonna drop to 19. Okay, this is good. Finding the jet, casting the Sarah Angel. Having, having another Sarah in hand as well. And Flyers is really something that Leo doesn't like. 
Now, of course, he's got answers in hand, right? He's got the fireball, so he needs one extra mana to use the fireball on the Sarah. He also has the uh, exactly the chaos. So probably gonna flip here. So let's see if he can uh, can hit the angel. And it is a hit. Beautiful flip there. It is a hit. Baptiste dropping to 18. And there's another Sarah hitting the board. But he still has that Fireball in hand. That's a land, I believe, exactly. Now he can cast Fireball to get rid of the Sarah. So he's finding the answers. And then next turn, he can start casting his robot creatures and start uh, dealing damage with that. Yeah, this is unfortunate for Baptiste finding that blue Elemental Blast just after that Fireball against the Angel. Taking two damage here, probably. Does he have, is that a Divine Offering in hand? I think I would take the damage. You really want to use your Divine Offering on a bigger thing, right? Or not? Yeah, he's going to take the damage here, dropping to 15. There's another land, there's a Suchi. And there's the pass. I mean, then again, even if you Divine Offering, of course, um, Leo has the Sage. You can respond with the Sage. Ah, uh, it's so t it's He's in such a tough spot. Exactly. Now we're going to see the Sage in action, right? So he's going to go for the Sage, meaning Leo doesn't gain life. I mean, uh, Baptiste doesn't gain life and Leo gets a card. I mean, it's an awful trade-off, but you got to do it when you're in Baptiste's shoes. Only one card in hand, and that's a blue Elemental Blast that's not doing a lot. Ah, uh, this is this this is just really bad here for uh, for Baptiste. I mean, top decking that blue elemental blast must have been like very very painful because you boarded in against the fireball that was just cast on your Sarah. Anyway, we see here the copy artifact. Copying here to the Felwer. There's the attack for one. So Baptiste here on fourteen. Card number two, another Felwer stone. That's not gonna cut it. Not even playing it out, passing the turn. Trying to, of course, uh, pretend to have counter magic in hand, hoping to kind of slow Baptiste down with that uh, potential threat of counter magic. And, you know, it could work. Because right now, Leo has got six mana, could cast a Triskelion, but probably thinking, if I do and he's got a counter spell, I cannot play my red elemental blast. So Leo taking his time. Should I go for it? Should I not go for it? Remember that copy artifact there is a Felwer Stone. So he does have six mana. But he's of course worried for a potential counter spell. Is going to take the risk. No counter magic. So right decision made here by Leo. To take the risk. So it's a 4-4. Four, four. There is a red elemental blast here. On the Sage. Sage is gone. Using the Sage one last time to sack that Felwer Stone. I mean, the Felwer Stone is, did his job. Library of Alexandria in hand and a Strip Mine. Attacking here for four. Leo probably going to keep the cards in hand here. Nope, he's not. He's going to play out the Strip Mine. I was thinking maybe he wants to keep the cards in hand because of that Loa. Deciding to Strip. Of course, he's seen two Sarah Angels kind of thinking maybe there are more to come. And when they stripped that land, he doesn't have enough mana to cast the Sarah Angels. He's going to tap two here. Also has a Swords to Plowshares in hand. So could cast the Swords protected here with the blue Elemental Blast. Well, actually, I meant <laughs> I was thinking about a red Elemental Blast. Sorry, wrong, wrong example. Anyway, we're just going to see the swords here. Leo thinking, do I want to kill my own trike or put three damage on the life total of Baptiste? Also thinking about that psionic blast that he's got in hand here. I mean, for, we, for me, it would make sense to just put the three damage on Baptiste because he's so low. But then again, the, he is removed. The trike is removed from the game, so he cannot get it back with an anime dead. So here is... Uh, the decisions Leo making as well, so putting him here on seven. There's a copy artifact, not going to do much at the at the moment. Playing out the Loa, passing the turn, three cards in hand. There's the pass. Mox Ruby, there's the pass. Baptiste here finding a factory passing turn. Ooh, there's the trike for Leo. This is a pretty big deal. Gonna cast it for Skellion. 
That resolves. Oh, he's so close to victory. There's the swords to plowshares. So is he going to put three damage here on Baptiste? Of course he is. Now he's on four. He's got the psionic blast in hand. Is it going to be all over here for Baptiste? We're one turn away. That psionic blast can do a lot here. Attacking for two. Going to set him back to, what, 21? Doesn't matter much. Probably going to see the psionic blast here. First going to bait it out with the ancestral recall. No response. Then Leo kind of knows he's in the safe. The safe zone. He's going to go to the semis. Counting the amount of cards in hand. Dropping the factory. Is he going to wait with the Sionic Blast? I mean, he's got to play it out, right? He knows Baptiste doesn't have a counter spell, or probably doesn't, or else he would have countered the Ancestral Recall. He's thinking about passing the turn, though. He is passing the turn in his upkeep. There's the Sayani Blast. And yep, that's it. Giving him here the win in the quarterfinals of the Often Troll Cup. Leo is going to advance to the semis of UTC5. Congratulations. And before we go, let's take a look at the match for next time. And that's going to be the semi-finals played at the Alton Troll Cup between these two decks. We have Fantasy Zoo by Svante. It's blue, red, and green. And he's taking on Anki. And he's pl playing a blue and red Atok deck with some of the usual splashes there. Of course, we see the two black cards. Demonic Tutor Mind Twist. A little bit of white in there as well. But apart from that, a very strong direct damage deck. So... It's going to be an interesting, interesting matchup. Both decks playing a lot of uh, direct damage, by the way. You see a lot of Chain Lightnings and Lightning Bolts and uh, Psionic Blasts in both the lists. So we could be up for a very short semi-finals, but it could also be extremely tense. Both of these players are very experienced, so I'm really uh, looking forward to this one. But that is all to come. Now, if you want to make sure that you don't miss this semi-final, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Because that way you will always be up to date about what happens here on Timmy Talks. And before you go, please take a moment to like, share and comment on this. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's, of course, one more thing that you can do. And that is become a sponsor of the show, a patron of Timmy Talks via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And you can already become a sponsor of the show for just $1 a month. And for that $1, you get your name in the end scroll at the end of every single video. What end scroll? This end scroll.